Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and happy Thanksgiving Eve. Okay, so let's get started here. So I finally um, got back on the water on my own boat. I've been fishing a lot on the Sea Hunter. So I fish on the Sea Hunter on Wednesdays and Sundays mostly, and I don't know, a few other extra days. And I really enjoy fishing on the Sea Hunter. It's a it's a nice, um, it's a great boat to 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 to, um, to fish on. But honestly, I prefer fishing on Good Karma. That's that's my boat, man. And yeah, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's windy, you can't go outside the reef. And like, I get that all every. I mean, I get the same stuff every year, man. And I Good Karma. I love to fish the patries. I always have, uh, and I, that's kind of where I, that's where I started. The basis of my business was on the patries down here in the Keys and, and yeah. So, and then when it's nice, I go outside the reef and I can go out and I do a lot of, you know, I, you know, I do some trolling this time of year for wahoo and tunas and maybe a, you know, maybe a mahi or two. I'll do some live baiting a little bit, some bump trolling. I just keep things pretty simple. It's about knowing where the fish are going to be at, what time they're going to bite, what time are they going to bite. So, which leads me to my fishing trip on Monday with Gary, uh, Gary and Scott. Gary is a, like, Gary and Scott are true gentlemen and guys that I really, really, really enjoy fishing with. There's just something about them that, and I get this with certain clients that I can just tell when somebody just has the passion for just being out of the water, wanting to just catch fish, rolling with it, and and I just really like having them. I really do as as clients. So we we were you know going back and forth about the weather and the weather has been pretty shitty so i hadn't fished on good karma much i haven't had a chance to get into the groove out there so but we went on monday it was still the water was really green we, we were fishing the outgoing the outgoing after it's been blowing to the north for who knows how long and nastiness the water was just a mess and there was no current we had a Basically, it was the current was pushing out to the deep, to the to the west, and it was just ugly. It was just like ugh. Even the, just the way the ocean was rolling wasn't nice. I just didn't like it. So anyway, so you're on a, a a day a full day charter, and what happened was I'm like so the tide was pretty shitty that day, and I needed to get the water to clean up. I needed the water to clean up, and I knew that wasn't going to happen until later. I knew, like, I hit several different spots, and the way that these mutton snappers bite and on these wrecks is can be, you know, there's, like, very tight windows to fish these fish, and, and you have to really look for good water. They just don't like that greenish, like, they just don't like certain currents, and there's a lot more to it. So you could have the absolute best bait in the world. You could be marking fish, but if it's not right, they're not going to eat it. So, like I said, I have like um, I have a lot of fishing spots. Let's just put it like that, a lot. And a lot of fishing spots are extremely hard to fish. And if you don't have the right sonar, if um, you don't know how to read the bottom, and if you don't know what you're looking for, then you're not going to like. It can be extremely challenging fishing um, deep water stuff. So, but I knew that these fish were going to bite and I just had to hang in there because things weren't right on the patch reefs either and the shallow and then the reef, there was no tide. I absolutely hate fishing yellowtails on a north wind. That's just me. I don't like to do it. And it just, it seems to me, it's just like, ugh, I just don't like it. So I don't do it anymore. I go with my gut. I just don't. The north wind, I don't yellowtail fish. And it wasn't, and it was too calm, the fishing on the patch reefs in the middle of the day. When it's the middle of the day, calm weather and patch reefs just don't mix. So I had to use a little bit of strategy. And this is where it comes with having a lot of fishing spots. I mean a lot. So I had to move around depths. And then I saw the water was starting to clean up. 
and it was getting into that that afternoon magic hour i call it is that like that two o'clock two o'clock time frame i had to tell i told gary and scott i go we just got to hang in there i'm gonna get them i'm and my gut when my gut's telling me that we're gonna get them we don't leave and these guys are like pretty hardcore and they trust me because we've had some good days and that's what it takes for me to perform is guys that believe in me and if I would have had a client that was kind of wishy-washy and wanted to wrap it up, it would have been like, then it probably wouldn't have worked. But I had the right clients, and I was like, okay, let's just hang in there a little bit, and we're going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it up, and we're going to go fish some areas I haven't fished in a little bit, and I'm going to see if I can find some clean water. And I went and found some clean water, and I found the, the a very large congregation of mutton snappers that were very nice fish. They were all keepers with a few big ones in there and on a really tight spot that most like, that's very challenging to fish. And if you really wanna learn how to fish these tight spots then you gotta buy, then I've got a course, I've got two courses that are gonna really help you out there and I'll get to those in a second. So, but we got them. I mean, we got them, we got them. And I mean, we, every, every drift between three o'clock and and I fished. It was from it, the bite started. I said we gotta wait until everything shifts and the sun does something different, and we find get the clear and clean water. And it happened. The tide got right, but the waves picked up big time. And I was fishing in four to fives, and it was sloppy. And I was taking them over the bow, but the sea keeper did its job. And Gary and Scott have fished with me before. They're well trained on what to do and how to deploy lines, how to get weights attached, and how to make long leaders work for mutton snapper fishing in deep water with zero tangles and being efficient and working hard. And that's what they did. They, they, turned, they cranked in the, in the last minute and they used, all their, used everything I got. I told them I had to stay on the wheel. And all, it took every ounce of me to keep the boat positioned to where I could just hit the spot every time and you guys could get, they could get bites. And we got the bites, but the like I said, you can I can get you all the bites in the world, and it just it really doesn't matter as a what sticks. My job as a fishing guide is to put people on fish, and I can't control how the fish come in the boat. Now the that that the spot had sharks on it, it had kudas on it, but we I, I managed to find a couple little little areas off the main spot because the. The, the main spot was loaded with kudas, so I went and found an aggregation off to the side. And that's something that I teach people in the new course that I put out of finding spots. I show people a wreck in 300 feet with, with the exact spots on how to fish them and how a wreck breaks apart. It is a nugget that, and I put that wreck in there, has something for you guys to learn on. And I give you the GPS coordinates for that spot, and I show you the, the exact structures to fish and how to catch the large mutton snappers on it. It has a starting spot for you guys. So, and that's in the new spot finding course. So anyways, we we got them. We, every drift, and I had two hours, but the sun goes down early, man. It's 5.30, the daylight hours are short. And I keep, room. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm still in summertime mode. I was like, and I looked at my watch and I was like, oh my God, there goes the sun. And it was getting rough. It was, if it was calm, I would have flipped on the lights and I would have like, we would have went back home with the, with the, um, with the beam, with the spotlight on. It wouldn't have been a problem at all. I got, my boat is, I've got it so lit up and I've got really good lighting systems on there. So when I do get caught in the dark, I, there's no issues and, and, and stuff. So then I, then I'll turn on the radar and that's what my radar is for is for um, safety. So, but um, yeah, we made every pass. We lost a few on the main spot and then I moved off of it and found a, and went to another, um, another side spot off to that spot that I had and we got them on it and we got the muttons in the end and we got our, I'm always looking for a big, big fish or two and some eaters and with mutton snappers, the yield's very good. And, and we got them at the end. So we didn't get our wahoo, you know, but hey, you know, it's wahoo fishing, big deal. I like, I'm over that, man. I tell clients now, if you're booking a wahoo trip with me, you might get one or two bites, but I make zero guarantees and some days you're not going to get a bite. There's just some days everybody else is going to catch them and you're not. That's just how shit rolls out there, man. That's how it rolls. That's how fishing works. That's how life works. So, but 
you wake up the next morning and you sh you go home, you shake shit off and watch some. I watch a lot of professional wrestling. <laughs> it's like that's how I like vent at the end of the day. I and that's it, man. I and I get up and I do it the next day. So and then I I kind of ch change some stuff around and if I get them the next day, I get them. If I don't, I don't. That's just uh, but I just keep going. I just keep going fishing. So that's it. But I like I said, we got them at the end of the day and. It's taken, it takes many years to learn how to do, it took many years to learn that kind of stuff. And I have a lot of different areas that I fish and I know how fish move and where to be with clean water. So in the new spot finding course that I released, I, I, I give you the nuggets. I give you one nugget for finding these spots, okay? It's in there. I give you the golden ticket to deep water mutton snapper fishing. It's there. So but I'm not going to talk, tell you what it is in a podcast. You'll have to buy the course. And I show you exactly how I found all these spots. And I walk you through a, a map of the keys. And I show you an example of how I do it. And then I show you, like, basically, like, where to look. So, and then within that, within the spot finding course is the... I, I give you the queen snapper drifts on the hump. I give you the exact drifts that I do for catching queen snappers on the Isla Mirada hump. Not on the 409 hump, but on the Isla Mirada hump. So that's a hell of a lot closer than going to the 409, I can tell you that much. So I show you the exact drifts. I show you how to do it. And, and I give you the GPS locations for it. So I don't do it that much anymore. And it's like I said, fish move around, they swim. And I don't make any guarantees about it, but I show you exactly. I, I give you my, I give you the the chart. I show you exact my exact drifts off my GPS. So, and uh, what you can do is you can apply. It's it's there for an example for people to to learn and build some confidence with and catch some fish, so you can go and find your own areas and learn how to do stuff. So it's just how it's. I wish that would have been available to me. You're not gonna find that shit on a on YouTube. They don't they don't give you that stuff. So I just I gave you a golden nugget. It's just part of the bonus there. I was gonna do a separate course on um, queen snapper fishing, but I decided to roll it into the um, the spot finding course. So everything that I did on Monday to find fish, it was everything I just outlined everything in the courses. I, I just follow that to the to the T. It's my recipe, I call it, and I and I basically give you the recipe for success and to help build your confidence so you can go and 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 execute on your own. So Gary, what's so great about Gary is Gary's applying my mutton snapper, mutton crusher rig to work up in Fort Lauderdale, where supposedly it's fished out of mutton snappers. <laughs> and only a few select guys catch them. Gary is new to uh, Fort Lauderdale fishing and he is absolutely and he is like when he goes he's catching nice mutton snappers and he's like using the mutton crusher rig so and he's following the techniques that I taught him so that I outlined in the in the drift in the drift course so and Gary is he, he just recently moved from California um, to back to South Florida for retirement to fish so He's a true gentleman, and he really was there to learn, and and he really applies the stuff that he's that he's learned from me in um in South Florida, and he's catching fish, so and he's very like and he's and he thanks me for it, and he just a, it just really means a lot, so I really appreciate it. Just a great client, so it just and I'll go. I went to I went to the very end for them, and like I saw, I, I told Gary at the and he said, you know, it's like was very grateful to go. Hey, man, good people get good things, and you deserved it. I really wasn't going to let these guys, um, like I wanted these guys to have a successful trip, and I was gonna I would have probably stayed out there all night for them because that's how good they are, and that's how good they are to me. So um, it was super cool, and they worked hard with me. It's a great, it was a great team effort. And I really, it's, it's, it's not all about how many you catch. I can tell you that much. It's about quality for me. And when I can catch a 15, you know, a beautiful mutton snapper and, a, and some, and some nice 20 inch fish. And that's, that's awesome. That's it. We caught a bunch of other shit too, you know, we caught a bunch of other stuff, but like we caught the black fins and all that stuff. But you know, we could have like, we could have tore that up, 
but it wasn't about dragon feathers and all that shit. And we, I don't get into that. It's there's plenty of other charters out there that'll you know take your feather dragon on the troll. So that's just not me. I'm looking for quality stuff. I want my clients to have a good time, catch some great fish, and make some memories and learn something and learn something. So, um, that's you know that's kind of it. So, uh, so I've got my Black Friday special right now. So for uh, for the courses, and you get twenty percent off. It's a Black Friday, Cyber Monday thing, and the the um, the code is G D K Black Friday. G D K Black Friday. So, and I'll put the code in the show notes for you guys. And like I said, you get twenty percent off. Um, Video, the video tutorials and courses it's one one use per uh, per customer so it's um yeah so if you really want to like take it to the next level and want to learn exactly what i do i lay it out to you there's no secrets you get to see exactly what i do on my on my uh, fishing charter so in the in the courses and then um along with like i said in the spot finding course is really good because i give you the nuggets I give you one nugget in there that's going to change everything for you and what you look for out there. It's going to make it so much more easier and for you to find deep water spots. So, and it's really going to help build your confidence to be better out there. It's, it's there. It was, I wasn't going to do it, but I was like, yeah, you know, this is, this is, this is what's going to change, change things for guys. If they can really start making it happen. And I saw, like, I seen this couple guys out there that bought my course the other day, and they were doing it. <laughs> so, saw them out there in their in the bay boat, and I knew who they were, and I was like, they were doing exactly what I taught them to do, and I was like, all right, man, nice job. So, and I'm sure they caught plenty of fish. A um, couple things else too, but nah, that's it. I don't want to really want to. That's that's all I got. All right, that's all I got for today, guys. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Good Karma Sport Fishing underscore FL underscore Keys. Check out my website, GoodKarmaSportFishing.com. Sign up for my private Facebook group. It's the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. Again, it's a private Facebook group, so you have to fill out all the rules and before I can accept you into the group. And that's it. I hope everybody gets out there and goes fishing. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. And remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good.